Thank you, Professor Kubo, for your kind introduction. And I also thank organizers for this wonderful symposium. It's an honor for me to be here. Today, I'll talk about the roles of mitochondrial calcium dynamics in cardiomyocyte function as an example of a physiom study. First of all, what is physiom? The word physiom consists of physio, life, plus on as a whole. It's a study to provide quantitative description of physiological dynamics. To achieve this, we repeat cycles of experimental analysis and mathematical model analysis. For example, we perform physiological experiments to characterize ion channels and transporters and major ion dynamics. Then we put experimental data into the comprehensive cell model to theoretically analyze the mechanism and to make working hypotheses. We again go back to physiological experiments to validate the hypothesis. By doing this physiom strategy, we have been studying on mitochondrial calcium dynamics in ventricular myocytes and uh, B lymphocytes. Mitochondrial calcium is an important factor regulating energy metabolism, cell death pathway, and cytosolic calcium signaling. It is not static, but changes dynamically according to the cytosolic circumstances. The calcium mitochondrial calcium dynamics is determined by the influx and the efflux. For the influx, a mitochondrial calcium unipotal, MCU, plays a major role in most tissues. For the efflux, sodium calcium exchanger, NCX meat, and proton calcium exchanger, HCX meat, predominates in excitable and non excitable tissues, respectively. We have been studying on NCLX, which is a gene responsible for mitochondrial sodium calcium exchanger. We found that in B lymphocytes, NCLX heteronockout diminished the cytosolic calcium response to antigen receptor stimulation. In HL1 cardiomyocyte, which is a mouse atrial myocyte derived cell line, NCLX knockdown prolonged the cycle length of spontaneous calcium transient. We also found that endoplasmic reticulum ER and sarcoplasmic reticulum SR calcium content were diminished in NCLX knockout or knockdown cells. So we propose that NCLX is functionally coupled with ER or SR calcium pump SACA, thereby regulating ER SR and cytosolic calcium dynamics. In 2016, an interesting phenomenon was reported. MCU, which is a mitochondrial calcium unipotal distribution, is biased towards the mitochondrial SR interface. Please see here. The signals from MCU shown as red co-localized with signals from Ryan's in receptor shown as green. They found that 50% of MCU was co-localized with Ryan's in receptor. Subsequently, they found that mitochondrial calcium uptake hotspot here, which is composed of MCU and Ryan's in receptor, lacks mitochondrial calcium extrusion activity probably mediated by NCLX, to optimize signaling efficiency. Then the question arises, is there any spatial coupling between NCLX and SACA? 
And if so, what is the functional role of the coupling? In order to answer this question, we performed a physiom study. The first part consists of experimental analysis. First, we examined the exogenous expressions of NCLX. We did bimolecular fluorescence complementation assay. We constructed plasmids of NCLX and SACA fused with an N or C terminal half of monomeric Xavira green. And then these eight combinations of NCLX and SACA were transfected into hex cells. And fluorescence was detected using confocal microscopy. If NCLX and SACA existed apart in the cells, there should be no fluorescence. But if NCLX and SACA were localized closely, monomeric Xavier green should be reconstructed and the fluorescence should be detected. Here are the results. We tested four isoforms of SACA, SACA1 to A to B and 3. Let's focus on SACA to A, which is a major isoform expressed in cardiomyocytes. Clearly, bright signals were observed in most combinations. On the other hand, no positive signals were detected for a pair of NCLX and NCX1, which is a plasma membrane sodium calcium exchanger used as a negative control. These results suggest that exogenous expressed NCLX is closely localized with exogenously expressed SACA. Then we examined the endogenous expression of NCLX in the heart. First, we performed immunofluorescence analysis using isolated mouse cardiac mitochondria. The signals from NCLX, mitochondria orange, and other proteins are shown as green, red, and blue, respectively. And the merged images are shown in the right. It's clear that the signals from NCLX overlap with mitochondria orange. Interestingly, these overlap apply also for SR calcium handling proteins, SACA and rhinzine receptor, but not for sodium potassium ATPS used as a plasma, plasma membrane marker. So, endogenous NCLX at cardiac mitochondria is restricted to the area where SR are attached. Then, we performed immunofluorescence analysis using isolated cardiac ventricular myocytes. The signals from NCLX showed striped pattern in between mitochondria orange signals. Please see this plot. The fluorescence intensity peaks from NCLX and mitochondria orange appears alternately. 3D reconstructed images shows that NCLX, shown as green, uh, is localized to the edges of mitochondria, shown as red. Then we tested the spatial distribution of NCLX and SR calcium handling proteins. Here are the results. These yellow rectangular regions are merged and shown here. Co-localization analysis showed that both Pearson's coefficients and Mandel's coefficients are the highest for SACA, suggesting that NCLX is closely localized with SACA in mouse ventricular myocytes. And 70% of NCLX was co-localized with SACA, and 30% of SACA was co-localized with NCLX. Then, how does this partial coupling between NCLX and SACA contribute to cardiomyocyte functions? We have some clues. We already showed that the NCLX knockdown prolongs the cycle length of spontaneous calcium transient. We also found that SR calcium content was decreased by NCLX block. 
an SL calcium reuptake rate after the caffeine application was decelerated by NCLX block. And we propose that there is a functional coupling between NCLX and SACA. Now, we hypothesize that spatial coupling between NCLX and SACA contribute to this functional coupling. To test this hypothesis, we performed mathematical model analysis. This is a mathematical model of a HL1 with mitochondria SL interaction, named MSI. The model was based on the human atrial myocyte model by Grandi et al. 2011. The equations for ion channel properties in the HL1 cell model were modified from Grandi model according to the experimental data using HL1. The symbols are from experimental reports, and lines are from our simulation results. Although intact atrial myocytes and grandi atrial cell model do not have automaticity, our HL1 cell model acquires automaticity, as observed in real HL1 cardiomyocytes. Let me show you our simulation platform. We can see the spontaneous generations of action potentials and calcium transient. At the same time, we can track each ion channel current here, SR calcium fluxes and mitochondrial calcium fluxes. Heart rate and cycle length are calculated every one second and shown here. Again, we our HL1 model will reproduce the spontaneous generation of action potentials as observed in HL1 cardiomyocyte. In order to understand the mechanism of the automaticity, we plotted the relationships between membrane potential at upstroke phase and each ion current and fluxes. First, rising receptor flux is increased. Here, calcium is released from SR, and then calcium at junctional space increases. The junctional space is this narrow space between plasma membrane and SR. And this junctional space calcium increase potentiates the inward current of plasma membrane sodium calcium exchanger to depolarize the membrane. And this depolarization activates uh, voltage-dependent sodium and calcium channels to produce large action potentials. In other words, automaticity of HL1 cardiomyocytes is driven by a spontaneous calcium release from SR, so-called calcium clock. In fact, application of tapsigarin, a circa broker, prolongs the cycle length confirming the proposal. Then we tested the contribution of spatial coupling. In MSI model, we assume um, extreme strong coupling between NCLX and SACA, which is named NMSC. Through NMSC, all calcium efflux from mitochondria enters SR. Our super resolution imaging showed that 70% of NCLX was co localized with SACA. So we set the fraction of NMSC to all NCLX uh, to be 70%, and the rest 30% is facing cytoplasm. And 30% of SACA was co localized with NCLX. So, 30% of NMSC, uh, we said 30% of NMSC, and the rest 70% of SACA is facing cytoplasm. Dira Frente et al. showed that 50% of MCU was co localized with rhinogen receptor. So, we said 50% of MCU 
to be faced with junctional space where the lines in receptor faces. In the non-MSI model, which do not uh, consider mitochondrial SR interaction, we remove these couplings. Both MSI model and non-MSI models will reproduce the spontaneous generations of action potentials and calcium transients. And the, each component of SR calcium influx is shown here. Then we tested the caffeine application protocol. This is an experimental data uh, measuring SR calcium using a flat sensor calcium uh, chameleon D1ER. The application of caffeine empties SR calcium content. And the removal of caffeine uh, initiates the calcium reuptake which was diminished by NCLX reduction. In both MSI and non-MSI models, the, uh, the time costs were comparable to the experimental data. Although the SR calcium uh, oscillations shown here could not be detected in the experiment, probably because of the low temporal resolution of our flat imaging. Anyway, this period was magnified and shown here. The NCX mid reduction decelerated the SR calcium reuptake rate as in experiment in the MSI model. But in non-MSI model, contribution of NCX mid was negligible. Uh, we tested other parameters. The SR calcium content decrease by NCLX de reduction was reproduced by uh, MSI model shown as magenta symbols, but not by non-MSI model shown as green symbols. And the slowing of firing rate by NCLX reduction as well. These results suggest that the function uh, Functional coupling of NCLX and SACA are based on the spatial coupling of NCLX and SACA, and it's required, required for reproducing the experimental results. This is a summary. NCLX is predominantly localized, uh, preferentially localized with SACA, SACA than with Ryzen receptor and sodium potassium ATPase in mouse ventricular myocytes. NCLX reduction in HL1 cardiomyocytes modulates SR calcium dynamics and firing rate. The model predicts that the biased distribution of mitochondrial and SR calcium handling proteins is required to reproduce the experimental result. And the conclusion is the spatial coupling of NCLX, SACA, and MCU, Ryanin receptor, is important for the cardiomyocyte functions. I would like to thank Professor Satoshi Matsuoka of University of Fukui, and Dr. Nakajima and Dr. Takatsuka for supporting uh, super resolution imaging. Thank you for your attention. Uh, thank you, Ayako, for a beautiful presentation. Any questions? Yes, please. Uh, hello, my name is Song Jun Kim from Seoul, Korea. Uh, congratulations for your very nice uh, data. I have a question uh, about the role of this uh, spatial coupling in the ventricle. You showed the nice connections, but the normal fresh ventricular mass it does not beat spontaneously. Uh, different from the HER1 or actually my, I, I also have an experience with the IPSC drive the cardiomyce shows such a spontaneous beating based on the calcium clock like mechanisms but not in the normal ventricle what is the difference to explain such different uh, yeah. yes our goal our final goal is to understand the role of NCLX and SACA in 
vent real ventricular myocyte and real pacemaker cells, but now we only have HL1 cardiomyocyte functions. But uh, well, the, for example, the contraction is also very uh, is also based on SR calcium content. So maybe contraction capacity should be regulated by this coupling, but it's just a prediction. And we also have to think about the metabolism. The mitochondrial calcium is also very important for regulating the ATP uh, production. So we have to combine these all complex phenomena into one uh, model, and that is our final goal. Thank you. Any other question? Uh, I have one question, and uh, you showed beautifully the uh, spatial uh, proximity of MTLX and the SARCA is very critical for the function. And uh, I wonder why and how these two molecules on different membranes located so close. How? And uh, for example, is there any interacting site on the extracellular, extracellular side? I have no idea about... Um, at, at present, we don't have any clue for the, the signal peptide or something like that. And yeah, I, I want to also know. Thank you. And uh, also, when calcium is released, before the diffusion to the, uh, to the space, is it immediately uptaken in the very limited uh, environment? Uh, that's another <laughs> important question, but we don't have any experimental crew and also model crew. But, but at least in the model, we try to uh, set very narrow compartment but it didn't work. So the flux from NCLX to SACA should be very fast or tightly coupled. That's what I want to, I, I, I can say right now. That, that, that's very good information. The tight coupling, uh, immediate uptake is needed for, for the reconstitution. Okay, thank you. Ah, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Uh, my name is Masaki Mori from the University of Occupation, uh, Occupational and Health, Environmental Health. Uh, thank you for the nice talk. Uh, I just want, want to know that how you ca can you express that the colocalization of SACA and NCX? I'm sorry, very basic question. How can you express that in the mathematics equation? So, the, sorry, uh, the, the coupling for, for between the, the NCX and SACA. You in, the, in the mathematics, uh, how can you show that, that the colocalization? Uh, colocalization? Yes. Yeah. So we, we assumed an extreme coupling. So all calcium is extruded from this uh, part enters SR. That's so that what we did for the coupling. So the, the, the distance is, you, you exclude the distance between two of them, or what? We didn't uh, assume any distance, that all, all calcium, all calcium enters SR. Enter. It's a too extreme, I, I know, but with this assumption, without this assumption, we could not reproduce the experimental data, so. I see, I see. Maybe I see, as, I see. A, as a, I Properties yeah. should be okay, okay, I just want to, yeah, thank you. Okay, Jamin uh, Sui from uh, Washington University in St. Louis. Um, oh, stand. I don't have a phone to drop now. Um, okay, so uh, just to follow up uh, um, uh, Hiros and, uh, uh, and his question, when do you make that uh, um, uh, treatment of a direct uh, uh, connection, but in another model that you don't have the connection, so that uh, uh, the calcium will not directly go into um, 
uh, mitochondria. Or, uh, so, so when you do that, do you see that the intracellular calcium concentration or the increase, the cytosolic calcium concentration? Uh, well, if we assume mitochondrial calcium uh, without this coupling, uh, mitochondria, uh, the calcium enters mitochondria and mitochondria works as a calcium buffer. So as a whole, cytosolic calcium is decreased, not so increased. If, uh, so if there's no coupling? Without, without coupling. Oh, oh calcium, oh, okay. The, the, so you do see the change of cytosolic uh, calcium? Uh, by... Uh, when, you, when you get rid of the, uh, the coupling. Which, which cytosolic calcium? Uh, calcium transient amplitude or the level of averaged calcium? Uh, mm -hmm. Both case, right? So um, if you if you do not have the calcium uh, directly exchange in, uh, between the two compartments, uh, yeah. then then th there should be some calcium c concentration change in the cytos cytosol, right? Yes, but we have calcium uniporter which mediate calcium influx into mitochondria and efflux. Uh, transporter NCLX. So there, uh, the steady state. There, th these maids make steady state. So, okay. as a whole, mitochondrial introduction into the model decreased the cytosolic calcium level as average. And if we uh, we block NCLX in this uh, at this condition. The cytosolic calcium uh, slightly the, the amplitude is slightly increased, but this increase again uh, affects the mitochondrial calcium uptake by MCU. So it makes another steady state. So it's relatively difficult to Okay, so but can, you, can you measure the force of, a, of the contraction? I, I don't know if you, if you could. So, sorry? I, I, I mean, can you, or can you, can you monitor the cytosolic calcium concentration yes. uh, directly, see, experimentally, and to see what's the consequence of that decoupling? We can discuss later. Yeah. So, so, so I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, thank you for uh, for discussion. Uh, now it's almost time, and uh, we'd like to move on to the next presentation. Uh, thank you, Ayako.